given to me and then I was, I'm praying with someone at the moment. We've been praying for some time now. And I got this scripture because um, if, I'll tell you how it started. We actually pray on specific topic. But, and then I said to the person, it's going to be a long time prayer. And what is happening is that when we, we saw someone preaching, yeah, we heard the preaching, and then we thought, hmm, this is a kind of prayer that we need to do on specific, this specific issue. But the fact is, we started. But even when we were doing that prayer, it was like, Okay, we're going to use the same scriptures, but we don't, we don't use it. Every time we do, decide something, it doesn't happen. And then one day we're praying, and the Lord revealed by giving this scripture. And then I said, wow, Lord. And I've been praying, I said, no, Lord, this is really key. I'm not going to keep it, I, have, I want to share it. So I have two things in my mind that I, I was thinking of sharing, <coughs> but this kept popping in. And especially an example happened the, uh, yesterday, I said, okay, I know, I know now it's this one. Amen. Because it's important to always seek God's God's um, approval. Let me say that way. Because one man has a way, but God has his way. Amen. So this morning, I want to speak about this scripture, and I wanted to give you why and how it came, and how it affects things. Because you can see that when God wants to do something, He wants us to do it His way. Amen. When God, when God wants to change your life, He wants it to happen in His way. Amen? But we have a plan, we have ambitions, we have desire, we have passions, things that we have already designed. You have already made your house and you don't want God to change anything in it. That is the reason why some people don't see answers to their, their prayers. That is the reason why some people find it hard to see a change. If you, you are not flexible with God, it will be difficult. I'm not saying that we cannot think. And how do you even know that what you're doing is not God, it's you, it's you or it's God, it's not you? I will tell you how. Amen? Because the scripture today is going to tell us. Amen. Hallelujah. So, many times we stop doing things and we do them thinking we are, doing the, we are taking the right path. We, are we, have decided, we have made the right decision. And everything around looks like it is the right decision. The best example I can give is when Jonas was told by God, go to Nineveh and talk, 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 uh, sorry, tell the people to repent. And he didn't want to. So, God said, go that way, he took the other way, the opposite way. And everything was working well for him. He, he, he found the money to buy, to pay for the boat. He got into the boat. And even then, people had, he had the favor of people. But if you read on, the Bible says, God has prepared the fish. The fish didn't come out of nowhere. The, the Bible specifically said that God had prepared the fish. So know that whenever you disobey God, the fish is waiting for you somewhere. <laughs> There's a time that fish will swallow you. And when you're swallowed, you become like Jonah. That's the thing. That, that's what happened to him. Because it can work well and everything looks like it's fine. It is fine. Yes, you're doing the right thing. But it's not the right way because it's not the way of God. He was doing the right thing running away from God. <laughs> it was right for him. But was it right for God? Amen. Amen. And we're going to see that most of the time, when we're doing that, 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 we are in that predicament, when we're doing things and we think we're doing the right thing, and we even see that favor is coming, things are happening, we think that God is with us. No, it's the permissible will of God. The permissive will of God is not the perfect will of God. Many people are married out there out of the permissive will of God. The permissive will of God is when you force God's hand. Because He's loving, He will still give you. One example, Ishmael. God had a promise given to Abraham and Sarah, but it didn't want to wait. But do you see where the fish came? Hmm. The fish came at some point of time. When the lady thought, oh, yeah, I'm the wife who has a child here, you have none. Isn't it Sarah who told Abraham, go with my servant, who was the first to say, please tell them to leave? Hmm. Because the fish came. Whenever you are in the permissive will of God, I'm telling you something today, there is a fish waiting for you somewhere. And that fish is not the devil, it is God himself. Because if the fish is not there, his perfect plan cannot come to pass. The fish has to stop you at some point of time. It's God who said to Abraham, don't worry, let this child and the mother go. Because this is going to be something holding them, holding the lesson of God. So when God brings that fish, it's not to harm us. Mm. It is because he still wants his perfect will to come to pass. 
Amen? Amen. So we need to understand that this very morning, that there is a good way to do things, the right way, but is that way right before God? So it means that we need to seek God's direction. And we're going to see what the people did here, the people of Israel. And I, I like this story. Uh, Jules, can you please put um, from verse 1? We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 6 for now, please. Uh, uh, Judges 20. Can someone read it, please? Then all Israel from Dan to Beersheba and from the land of Gilead came together as one and assembled before the Lord in Mizpah. The leaders of all the people of the <coughs> tribe of Israel took their places in the assembly of God's people. 400,000 men armed with swords the Benjamites heard that the Israelites had gone up to Mizpah. Then the Israelites uh, said, Tell us how this awful thing happened. So the Levites. Stop, stop here first. People like stories here. Yeah. When, when something happened, they want to know all the details. Of course, they're going to be told all the details. Go ahead, please. From verse 4. So the Levite, the husband of the murdered woman, said, I and my concubine came to Gibeah in Benjamin to spend the night. During the night, the men of Gibeah came after me and surrounded the house, intending to kill me. They raped my concubine and she died. I took my concubine, cut her into pieces and sent one piece to each region of Israel's inheritance because they committed this lewd and outrageous act in Israel. Oh, what a sad story, isn't it? Someone says sad story. Sad, sad story. story. Don't we all oh, have compassion for this man? Don't you have a... Don't you have compassion for this man? How come they rape and, and, and kill his wife? How can they do that? Don't you have compassion? Mm. Look, the people of Israel told him in verse 3, tell us how this awful thing happened. Let me remind you that this Levite is a priest. So it means that it's the concubine of a priest that will kill. Like today he will be like the wife of a pastor. But listen, he told the whole story but he missed something here. He didn't tell them that he himself, he himself handed her over. You have to read before. That's where people, we like to exaggerate things, yeah? Because we're not taking responsibility for what we did wrong. He didn't tell them. If you read Judges 19, you're going to see what he did. Yes, she was murdered and raped. Fair enough. And we have compassion. Oh, come on. But I want to say something here. He didn't tell the whole story. He should have started from the start. Not only to the, from the end. Because the end looks like, yes, he didn't do anything. I'm just there with my concubine and they came in and they killed her. He handed her over to save himself. Most of the time, that's what we do. When we're in a bad situation, we lie. A little lie is just nothing. My friend, little or like that, the spot is the same before God. Amen. Amen. So this man exaggerated a little bit because it's very easy to give a partial fact of what happened than to give the whole story because they would have said, why did you do that in the, in the first place? Why did you abandon her into their hands in the first place? He didn't tell the whole story. He just gave the part that was actually going to satisfy his need for revenge. That brings me to think one thing. He wanted revenge, because we're gonna read it in a minute. He wanted revenge for what reason? He wanted justice for himself. No. Not for her who was killed. So we need to be very careful. Most of the things that we ask God for, the Bible tells us that look at our motives. Yes, Lord, they are doing this to me at work. What have you done? Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord, they want, they want me out of this job. They want to... Have you been coming late? What have you been doing? Because you're not going to tell the whole story. You're not going to say what exactly you've done wrong. But and in three minutes, why? How come? Two, three minutes, you know what the change you can make in someone's business? Mm -hmm. Two, three minutes, you can bring facts and fire. Two, three minutes, someone can die. Even one second. You know, we see it looks small. 
Okay. That's exactly what he does here. No, but that's not my preaching today. Let's move to verse, the verse um, 29 to 30, please. Go down, Jews. All the scripture is there. Um, but I want us to go to verse, no, um, chapter 9, chapter 19. Go down, go down, please. Chapter 19, Judges 19, verse 29 to 30. You're going to see what is written here. Because this man told a part of the story. I'm still on him before I, I, I even start my preaching. So, verse 19, uh, sorry, uh, chapter 19, verse 29 to 30. Can someone read it, please? When he reached home, he took a knife and cut up his concubine limb by limb into mm -hmm. twelve parts and sent them into all the areas of Israel. Everyone who saw it was saying to one another, such a thing has never been seen or done. Mm -hmm. Not since the day the Israelites came up out of Egypt. Yes. Just imagine, we must do something to speak up. Hallelujah. Can you imagine this man? He cut her up just because that's what people do. You go and start the fire somewhere and then you come and call us. Let's go and fight him. He is the one who cut her up in 12 parts because there were 12 tribes to send to all tribes. Why? What were you looking for? What? Don't we do that sometimes? You have a little problem with someone. Go into Sister Regin because you want Sister Regin to be, come team up with you against that person. Mm -hmm. Wrong person, wrong place, because I will give it to you. Amen. Amen. What I want us to understand here is that sometimes the way, the way we do things causes our own lust. The, the way we do things, it may look right to us, but it's not right. The Bible says here that not such a deed was done or seen since they had left Egypt. How can a man cut his wife into 12 pieces? Couldn't he just go and say, well, they killed her, they raped her, killed her. But you see how manipulation, me I can see manipulation here. Mm -hmm. And he managed to get his way. He managed. Let's go to, we are going back to our text. Our text tells us that he went there and all decided to follow him to war. Judges 20. They sat down thinking, yeah, look at what they did. We need to go and against those people. Mm -hmm. Amen? So we need to be very careful. This verse 8, uh, sorry, Judges 20 verse 8. Can someone read it very quickly? Uh, Judges 20 verse 8. All this, all the men rose up together as one, saying, none of us will go home. No, not one of us will return to his house. Can you believe that? This man came. He didn't tell them the whole story of how his wife was killed. Now, they're like, no, no, no. You know what? We all have to get up. The Bible says all of them rose. They all rose. And what did they do? They began to plot the plan of how they were going to go and revenge. They started doing the plan. They, they heard the story, starting plotting immediately. Mm. Keep that in mind. Keep those two. They heard the story, starting plotting. We ain't gonna go against them. Amen? Amen. Now, before we go further, and I'm, I'm gonna start preaching now, I want us to read uh, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 15, because then we're gonna come back to our text and I'll start preaching. What? 2 Corinthians says, uh, verse 6 to, uh, sorry, verse 6, sorry. Second Corinthians 6, verse 15. What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Belial. Mm -hmm. Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Amen. I want you guys to write this down. Those who are walking with unbelievers. What has a believer has to do with an unbeliever? What does Belial, Belial is actually the devil. What does Christ has to do with Satan? There's nothing in common. Amen? Why am I talking about this? Because that's what we're going to see in the text in a minute. So this, they, they, all these people, they went against uh, the, the children of Benjamin because they heard that someone of them or their family of their tribe was hurt. Amen? So now, Satan was actually in the midst of the children of Israel, but they didn't know it. That's what I see here. The devil, Bilal, was already in the middle in the middle of heaven. So it means that it's not because we are all here that Satan cannot be in our midst. 
You have to be very careful. Amen. Amen. Because if that wasn't the case, you're gonna see, we're gonna see what is gonna happen next. They were actually doing things that were not aligned with God, but they thought it was right. Amen. Just the fact that someone can cut 12. This is manipulation. Who manipulates the Bible? Isn't it the devil? Mm -hmm. You can see how the devil can work his will in people's minds. Mm -hmm. And you are thinking that you are doing the right thing. Amen? So the devil was already there among the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. In their midst. Not outside waiting for them. He was in the midst of them. But the children of Israel would not listen. That's a problem. They wouldn't listen. But instead, they gathered themselves to go and fight. They stood up to go and fight. Is this when you read the Bible? The Bible tells me that God fights for me. Mm. I haven't seen Jesus telling someone go and fight. I've never read it. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe I missed some, <laughs> something. He gave us the weapons. The weapons are more for defense. Amen. Mm. Not to attack because he is, the devil is Satan is his problem. Amen. Many times God says, "I will fight your battles." And this is exactly the case of this, what we are learning today. There are many battles that we are going through and God wants to fight them. And because we are not doing the right thing, that's the reason why we are not in the right way. If we are the right way, we will also do the right thing. The way of God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that these people have the devil already in the midst of them. They, uh, they lined up all together to go and fight. Amen. So the Bible tells us that they all they rose, they rose and went to the house of God. Come on. Can't you see this? And it looks good. Yes, I went to God and asked counsel of God. But the fact is, when they went to the house of God, they had already determined to go and fight. They have already made their decisions. There are many people here like that. When you have something in mind, if someone comes with something else, you take it, you, you, you get angry. Because you are determined with it already. Because you are so sure of you. They made the plan to go and fight before going to God. They should have gone to God first and asked, should we go fight? Amen. Isn't it? Amen. They decided. There are people who make the decision to walk on a path and then they go and ask God. What do you think he's going to do? Because even when he says no, are you going to listen? That's the problem. Mm. Because when you're already determined, it's difficult to change your mind. Mm. That is the reason why we actually have to walk the way opposite. Amen. Mm. Which is, God first before you determine. Ask God, do you want me to go? Do you want me to really do this? You don't know how many times I always ask God. And sometimes I'm like, are you really, really sure? If it's you, really, give me a sign. The first time he sent me to Haiti, that's what I did. Because he contacted me, I was in Italy. And then I said, please, I'm, uh, I'm abroad. Uh, when I'm in London, we get back. And then he, he continues, my brother, you're the young one. He was, I'm like, come on, you are too impatient. Eh, eh. He put it aside. When I came to London, I said, you know what, I'm going to pray. And I took seven, I said, I'm going to pray seven days. And my prayer was 12 days. I said, okay, the Lord has put in my heart that I, I need to, I have to come. Then I'm like, Lord, maybe I really want to go to reason, you know, like, is it really you? If it's really you, open the way. I, I don't even have the ticket. I don't want to ask them the ticket. Look how I was actually putting God into test. Is if it's really you, then they called me. A company that had not called me for four years or five years. And even an email that I don't use, my old French French email that sometimes I open it every six months. Look how I went and opened it to see that they were looking for me to teach a girl who was going to come uh, Gabon to speak with apes because she's studying apes. So she wants to learn French in, 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 in what? 11 days. Normally you do that. I used to work with them and it's, the courses are three months. You know, and you're paid separately. 11 days and I had enough money. Every lesson was like 40 pounds, yeah? So I had uh, enough money to buy the ticket, pay a hotel in America and uh, everywhere. I could even help the people when I was there. Amen. You see, then I knew that it's God sending me. Amen. 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 But how did it happen? I heard the news, I said, oh, oh, wait first, let me consult my father. Amen. But the fact is that these people were already determined, I am going. Mm. I'm going to war. After they decided, they went to God. You meet someone, you have to go first, Lord, before you start even talking to them. You go for work, you have to go and see God first and say, Lord, oh, there's a word there. Do you want me to go there? If it is not, remove it from my path. That's how we do things. You want to meet someone for the first time, even for a job or even interview. Speak to God first. Not you go and see and then you come back like, Lord, what we discuss. Be 
Because if you have consulted God before, He would have told you what to say. He would have even made you not to go. Mm. Amen. Amen. So what I'm trying to say here is that, look at this. They have already determined what they were going to do. That is to go to battle with their brethren. That is the time when they are now going to God. And look at how they phrase to God. Look at how they say. Can we read? We're going to read from verse 20 to 25 now, please, Jews. The Israelites went out to fight. Did we read verse 8 already? Uh, I said verse 8 first. Okay. Read, yeah, verse eight. read verse 8. Okay, please. Verse 20 to 25, yeah. The Israelites went out to fight the Benjamin. Okay, yeah, sorry. You're going to start from 19 because God told them to go. I want us to read. Because what I'm trying to show here is that sometimes God lets us have a supposed yes, which is actually his permissive will. Because you are already determined to do something anyway. And no matter what he says, you want to do it. He says, no, you're still going to do it. So you still say, you still say yes. And that's exactly what happened. And that's exactly what happened. Because most of the time when we think that we are right and right and right, you can't even listen to the person who tells you near you that you're not right. How much more God? How much more God? So that's what, look at what happened. So they went and asked for God's permission, yeah? After determining and God said yes. So now let's read verse 20 to 25. The next morning, go, go ahead, please. The Israelites went out to fight the Benjamites and took up battle positions against them at Gibeah. The Benjamites came out of Gibeah and cut down 22,000 Israelites on the battlefield that day. Shame! Wait, wait, let's stop here. When I read it, I'm like, Lord, you said yes. Why did they beat them up this way? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> let's give a clap to the Lord. <laughs> How many times have I heard people say, Lord, I pray. God told me yes. But there was failure in front. Mm -hmm. How did it start? When you prayed, were you already determined? Are you sure it was God's perfect plan? <laughs> That's exactly it. Come on, when I read this, I was shocked the first time. I'm like, no. God, you can't. You told him. Yeah. So I had to go up and read again. Did God say, yes, you can go? God said, yeah, go. You want to go? Go. Mm. And then they beat him up like that, up to 22,000 killed in one day. Let's continue reading. But. But the Israelites encouraged one another. Hey, we like that. No, 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 my friend, my sister, don't worry, don't worry. Next time, no, no, it's gonna be fine. No, I think this was just. <laughs> they start encouraging themselves. Yeah. And when you don't encourage, come to me. You know me. I don't encourage. I will say, did you really, really pray well? Did you? Do? You know me. Mm -hmm. That's the reason some people. I'm telling you that people who left this church because of that. Because when you see, you can. You, I have the discernment. Glory be to God. I didn't ask for. Really gave it to me. Amen. If I tell you something, you want to do your own thing, go! I know people who left this church for that. Because I'm like, hmm, that path. Hmm. But they're already determined. They actually, they were coming for me to encourage them. Mm. But I did not do that. I cannot lie if I know the truth. Amen? Mm. I will stick to what the Spirit has revealed to me, whether you like it or not. Mm. So they started encouraging each other. Look at what they did. Come on. But the Israelites encouraged one another and again took up their positions. Ha. They took up what their positions. They were determined to win the fight. So they took them where they had stationed themselves the first day. The Israelites went up and wept before the Lord until evening. Come on. Look at this. They took their positions again, determined to go, but they go back to church. Hey. Hallelujah. Continue. And they inquired of the Lord. Yes, they did. They said, shall we go up again to fight against the Benjamins? Our fellow Israelites. Mm. The Lord answered, go up against them. Look at this. Then the Israelites, verse 24, drew near to Benjamin the second day. This time when the Benjamins came out from Gibeah, to oppose them, they cut down another 18,000 Israelites. All of them armed with swords. These ones were even armed, but they cut them down. Mm -hmm. Didn't God say go? 
Hmm. When I write it, the second time, like, no, you better give me the revelation here. I don't get this anymore. Didn't you tell them to go? Why is it they are being killed like little chicken like this? Chopped off. <laughs> There's something wrong here. You need to tell me what's going on. My friends, I will tell you what was the problem. Their actions were determined by their, what they had determined. Their own decisions. Because of that, they lost 40,000 people. And if you can make the calculation, listen, that's one-tenth of 400 that they were. Does it ring a bell? Be very careful. One-tenth. God doesn't play with it. One-tenth. God doesn't. Listen, they first lost 22,000. Then they lost 18,000. 22 plus 18 is 40. They were 400,000 in the beginning. So one tenth. I'm telling you something. God doesn't play with the one tenth. I am telling you today. If you've been joking with the one tenth of God, be very careful. You're gonna see what happens. You're gonna speak. Let's continue reading because you, you, God gives clues in the scripture. All of them were there. All of them. And then what did God say this time? Go this time. I'm gonna give your enemy into your hands. My friend, I want to tell you something. Jesus, Jesus, for Jesus to be given, he had to be sold. They had, he had to be sold. For people to be able to take Jesus, they had to pay money to Judas. Don't think that some of your battles, you're going to get them by just fasting and praying and coming to church. I'm telling you, that's the fact. You may say, oh, she speaks about money. I'm not speaking about money. I'm preaching the word of God. I experienced that personally, myself. The day I was delivered, I planted a seed twice in the church. I was sitting there. I planted a seed. I just, I don't know what made me to do that that day. But I believe this, it was my time. And my deliverance came. There are battles that go on to fight for us, but because our heart, we, we are ready to give him what we want, but we're not ready to give him some of the things that he wants to see. Mm. If you're attached to things in the world, that's why he's going to ask for you. For you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? It's what you're attached to. Some people can give their money. Mm -hmm. They can't. They, they will give you time. They will give you everything, but give him one oh, or they complain. And then you want the victory of God? It's not going to happen because I'm telling you that that's exactly where he wants you. My, I know he doesn't even need my money. He doesn't even want me to give. I don't need. Because he knows that whatever I have, I'm not just give. So it might be my time or my prayer or whatever. Amen. Amen. What I'm talking here is not about money. I am preaching about our heart's condition. What is so dear to you that you cannot give to God? They could not give to God because their mind was so much on the things in the world, on the things that they liked. So they were coming to God just to come after making their own decisions. I'm telling you the truth. Even whatever decision you've made, even if it's in the permissive, God can turn it to your good. He can give you that victory that you're looking for because he's good and he loves us. Amen? Amen. So don't think that you may be in something you think, oh, it's a permission. This is the, the, the reality. The fact is that they were going to God in flesh. In flesh. Hmm. How do we go to God in flesh? I have a decision. I've made my decision. I have determined to do something. So it has to be my way. Because you're always going to satisfy you. But they didn't want to do it spiritually. That's the reason why they never had the victory. Mm -hmm. But when they decided to do it spiritually, God gave them the, the victory. But this time, the second time when they, the last time, the third time when they came, God gave them, them victory because this time they really sought for Christ. They came to present burnt offerings to the high priest, Jesus. Amen. Amen. They came to present burnt offerings and fellowship. Jesus brought fellowship into the world. That's the reason why I'm saying that is what Jesus they came to see this time. Jesus brought a fellowship. He is the one who resumed that fellowship that we can have with God today. No, people want a fellowship with God, just, I don't know, physically, why they are not here. It doesn't work. That's what they were doing. You cannot have fellowship with God with your spirit being absent in the presence of God. That's 
what they were doing. And God is like, yeah, go. Go. When you understand, then you come the right way. Amen? Amen. The right way is our heart's disposition. If your heart is not looking for God for who God is, my friend, Satan will trick you. You will be taking this, making decisions, thinking I'm doing the right thing. Then something happens and you're like, I don't understand. Why it doesn't work? Why this? Why this? Not why this. It's why you. Because God is ready. He gave them. He gave them victory. He said, go tomorrow, I'll give you victory. And you read that passage for me? Please, just continue reading. And the Israelites inquired of the Lord. In those days, the ark of the covenant of God was dead. With Phinehas, son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, ministering for it. They asked, shall we go up again to fight against them? Okay, good. Thank you. Now, this time, they didn't come like, yeah, we are going. Like, Let's us be going. That's what people want these days. They come to church, Lord, I want to do this, bless me. This time the Bible says they asked, the inquirer, so inquired means what? It's a petition. They are asking God for permission to go. They are asking God, do you let me go now? So actually they are ready to take God's opinion. They are ready to take God's guidance. They are ready to hear what God wants to say. What have you stored in your life where you didn't ask God for his opinion? You are just walking out there and then he's like headed every day. Amen. Amen. It's not too late. You can still petition today. Amen. You can inquire. You can stop and inquire. Lord, this has not been working the way I thought it was going to work. I believe there's a little fish somewhere. Yeah? I know I am in the fish. That's the reason why it's so hot. But now, please, I need your opinion. I need your advice. I need your guidance. I need your direction. Amen. Amen. This is very important. So this time, they didn't go like, Lord, we are going. The first time, like, we are going. Let's us. That's how many people do that? I've made a decision I'm going to do this. Then you come to church in the name of Jesus, Lord. You know the Bible says, oh, come on, and we know how to support the Bible. Yay! We know how to quote the Bible. But how can you quote the Bible that is life and then the things will remain dead? Mm. Then you have to stop and think. Amen? It means that that quoting is not working because you are actually doing the right thing. Uh, sorry, the right thing, but the way is not right. If you're doing the right thing, the right thing is going to church and ask for God, for opinion, but the fact is that do you ask it when you have already made a decision? What's your point? If you're coming to ask me for, I've heard people like, why are you asking me my opinion if you're not going to even listen? Why? Why Why are you wasting my time? That's what I'm going to do. You, you do that all of the time. You've already made your mind, you've decided you're going to do this, then you come to God. He's going to let you go. My friend, I'll tell you, he's going to let you go. But don't expect his victory because God is not in what he doesn't know. Mm. Say to someone, God is not in what he doesn't know. God is not in something he doesn't know. He, he is not in what he doesn't know. He's not, not in, in what, what he doesn't, doesn't know. know. So whatever you're doing, so whatever you're doing, seek him first. Seek him first. Not second. Not second. Seek him first. Seek him first. Amen. Amen. Because God gives us victory because when he knows. In his plan. He's not going to give you victory in a plan that was designed by the devil. For you. Mm. That's what we sometimes do. Because the devil, do you remember we talked about it on Tuesday? He's there to divert us. Yeah. He's diverting us. God has this path for you. The devil comes and diverts you. Now you are in that diversion and you want God to approve of it. He's not going to. He will wait until you come back to his way. Amen. Amen. Then you're going to have that victory. God is amazing. Of course, he loves us. And look at what wonderful victory he gave them. Come on. Can you read all, please? Yes? The Lord responded, go for tomorrow, I will give them into your hands. Shame! Amen. Whoa, listen. This is the first time. Yeah, he said. The, second, the, first, the first time, the first time and the second time he said, yeah, go up. You go. Because he's like, yeah, you want to go, go. Well, that's what you want to do. Just do it. This time he said, so what? Brother, read it for me again. Amen. Go, for tomorrow I will give them into your hands. Cage, Jesus. Tomorrow I will give them into your hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see the picture of God? Amen. He wants to give us that victory every single day. Mm. Every single day. My friend, please, I want you to experience the power of God. Amen. I want you to experience the victory of God. I'm filled up with those Christians who say, I'm more than conqueror. I look at your life, I'm like, are you really? Mm. My friend, I am. Someone has been bothering me at work and removing from my way. Come on. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's not even I'm looking for they removed and replaced. Amen. And the man, the man, my manager, like, yeah, we're gonna fill all the hours. Don't worry. I said, oh, me worried, you know me. Our Papa up there. We bother me. I have him. He's giving me victory. Amen. 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 You need to experience that. But that is not something magical. Mm. How, what have I done? When is there something? The day these guys continued lying on me. The first time I went out to God, and I, I even started regretting it because the next week he was beaten up. I told you the story. Mm. I, I regretted. I'm like, I didn't mean that, Lord. You know, he <laughs> was really beaten up. You know. Yeah, it was very bad. It was bad. We had to change the library and everything. And then one of the guys who uh, uh, attacked him is in prison right now. It was really bad. I'm telling you, I'm not joking. I didn't mean. I'm like, no, I didn't mean that. I just said that this guy keeps lying about me, and I, I don't understand what's going on. You know? I don't just get it. I said, you know? I'm like, I don't know. This is amazing. But. He was also confounded because he went to police and accused someone and then the CCTV showed that the person was somewhere else. When my manager called it and I said, I told you, you look at how I told my manager, I said, you know what, I, uh, this young man has a little problem with the truth. <laughs> That's what I said to him. He has a little problem with the truth. I didn't want to say anything. It's someone's child. I'm just there to teach and I'm not there to preach. Yeah? So I don't want to get into that. But God gave me the victory in the end because I couldn't tell him, you know, remove him. I couldn't say anything. He's doing the timetable. He's giving me the timetable. But well, in the end, when he told me on Wednesday evening, yes, we have replaced. I said, I have bad news and good news. I said, what is it? He said, we have replaced, we are going to put you where another student. I'm like, I started like, hey, man. <laughs> you can't believe it. teaching someone who keeps lying about you. You know? But I'm telling you, but the last time I told him, that, you're lying. I have to, he has to come out. Okay. Amen. Maybe he has to hear it. Amen. So what I'm trying to say is that God gives us victory. Even in little situations and big situations. Amen. God said, tomorrow I'm giving you that victory. Because this time you stop me the right, the right way. That's it. So stop saying, I've prayed, I've known, I've yeah. done, I've done. You may look like you're doing the right thing. But is it right before God? It may sound to you that what you're doing is right. But is it right before God? I will tell you the difference. You know it is right when God acts. If you don't act in them, not right. Whatever you do is not right. I told you about this pastor who used to pray eight hours. And then one day God revealed to him that, you know, you're spending your time there for no reason. And he had to admit that he was praying in the morning, two hours, two hours in the afternoon, two hours uh, uh, at snack time, two hours, eight. And everyone knew and everyone on eat that pastor is so proud of people who line up for him to pray for. God is like, you're spending that time for no reason. He said, you used to be a Muslim and then he, he, he uh, uh, became a Christian and he's a pastor now. And they had a, a big church I think in Africa or somewhere. And he was giving this testimony. He says, My testimony. It is my own testimony. And God one day revealed to me that you're doing that because you people, you know, you like people saying that you're a prayerful person. Hey, you have to admit it to yourself that there is something wrong. Because at the same time, he knew that as much as he's praying, he's not seeing the power of God manifested, he wasn't feeling anything. He knew it inside of him, but he wouldn't tell everyone. But the people would see him. Who is prayer for the line of prayer? People like to see signs, yeah? You see things. You see a little virgin like that, you ignore her. Why? So one day you see on TV, you run for them. That's what it is. But do you know if they even stand one minute praying? You know nothing. We just want to see things and believe what we see. The Bible says that believing is in what we don't see. Mm. Believe in what you don't see. Amen. Amen. Because the day you start believing in what you don't see, then God will do amazing, tremendous things in your life. He will give you battles that you can't even think of. You will pray, something happens. You will say, something happens. You will seek Him, He reveals Himself. That's what you need to have. Amen. 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 That's what I call the victory of God. I live by the picture of God and I know today that I'm more than conqueror. Amen. And I told you, even this Berlin line is afraid of coming to my house. Have you seen the Berlin afraid of someone in this country? They keep sending me letters, 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 and I'm like, what is it? But they don't come. Every day is like, we're coming next week, we're coming. You know? You know where? Why? Because the first time they send the first letter is down here on the altar. That's where I came to my love. Amen. To Amen. ask for wisdom. I didn't start fighting them. That's the reason why I said, I'm going to fight them. I read them. It's going to take 20 years, but I will fight you. But you know what I can say now? Because the first letter is here. I can get it out and show you. Amen. Amen. Most of the time, people.
people what will they do? You would have called your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters. Yeah, if anything been after me, you didn't know. The time I told you, it was already here. Amen. Amen. Because I sought my God first. That's why I'm walking with confidence. Amen. And I don't care what they do. Amen. Now they're in confusion. Amen. Because God can send confusion in the camp of the enemy. Amen. That's what the Bible tells me. Amen. And it's the same for every situation you're going through. Wherever you are bothered right now, I am telling you this morning that it depends on you. It depends on how you give that situation to God. Amen? Amen. So stop thinking about the situation. Stop thinking about what you're doing. You can't do anything. You can't do anything. Give it to God. Give it to God in truth and in spirit. Then you'll see the difference because then he'll give you the victory. He said God gave the children of Israel victory not in their own strength but in his strength. The Bible tells us that our strength is in the Lord. Our strength is in Christ. So what do you want me to fight? When I have a problem, I call on Christ. Lord Jesus, you carry this on the cross. I'm not going to take this. Of course, it bothers me a little bit. I have things like, but I can handle that. Whatever is going around, I handle it. Amen? Amen. Because I know that he's working the victory. Amen. He is working that victory. And look at this. I want us to read. Because I want you to see how many were killed the day God gave them the victory. I want you to see. Hmm. Amen. Continue the reading, please. And then we're going to pray in a minute. Go ahead, Jules. Then Israel set an ambush around Gibeah. They went up against the Benjamites on the third day and took up positions against Gibeah as they had done before. The Benjamites came out to meet them and were drawn away from the city. They began to inflict casualties on the Israelites as before, so that about 30 men fell in the open field. Amen. Look at this. This time, there are only 30 men who fell. Before it was 22,000. 18, they have only like 3, 30 who fell. But look at the, whoo, the whipping they will give the enemy. And I want to tell someone today that the enemy thinks that he knows, but he doesn't know that God has changed the strategy about you. Amen. God changed the battle strategy. The enemy knew. They knew that this is how we always do. We're going to do the same thing and finish them. Mm, Jesus. But this time, there's only 30 men who fell. Amen. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, God Amen. changes the strategy of battle Amen. for you today. Amen. As you come to him and you give him that situation, Amen. he is changing that strategy today. Amen. Let the enemy be surprised. Yes, Look at what happened now. They were continuing. They fell in the open fields and on the roads, the one leading to Bethel and the other to Gibeah. While the Benjamites were, Benjamites were mm -hmm. saying, we are defeating, the, we are defeating them and the out of it place on the west of Gibeah. Then 10,000 of Israel's able young men made a frontal attack on Gibeah. Hmm. The fighting was so heavy that the Benjamites did not realize how near the source the world. Eh? The Lord defeated Benjamin before Israel on that day. Yeah. The Israelites struck down 25,100 Benjamites, all armed with swords. Amen. Stop here. Remember that in the beginning there were 28,000. Out of 28 in one day, 25,000 fell. Hmm. And they saw disaster, they started panicking. Let the enemy panic. Amen. Let the enemy see that God has changed the battle, the, the way you are fighting. Amen. 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 But you have to do it the right way. Amen. And the right way is the way God himself, Jesus, has shown us. Amen. Because Jesus has already given us the victory. But we are not walking in that victory. That is the reason why the enemy thinks that he has already won. And every day you're tired, every day you're weak, every day you don't know what to do. Please, change that, I don't know what to do. How can a child of God not know what to do? Is your father not the one who makes directions? Mm. If I ever hear someone again saying, I don't know, I'm going to shout at you. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. I don't know what to do. I will shout at you. Your word. I will shout. So you can see that disaster happening. How can a child of God say, I don't know what to do? Is it not God who gives directions? Amen. Amen. So we need to know who we are in Christ. We are seated. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. And you are seated there. So from there, you have the vision. You, have, you can see everything. Mm. You can see. This is amazing. We really need to explain that. Amen? Amen? So the lesson we are learning today, there are four things I want us to remember. And those four things are now after that we're going to pray. 
the first time is that we need to keep quit, sorry, trying to do things our own way. Stop doing things your own way and then go and present them to God for him to bless. He's not going to bless what he doesn't know. That's the first point. He blesses what he knows. Amen. Amen. The second, because God is not going to bless you knowing that that will cause death. That's, what, what, that, that's one of the reasons. Amen? Amen. The second thing is that approach God the correct way. Jesus taught us how to. He was led in the desert. When he needed that strength before the cross, he was in the desert. When you really want the direction of God, when you need the strength of the Lord, do what Jesus did. Stop being around people with your phone and whatever. Put them away. When I want the direction of God, I isolate myself. Yes, I've been praying. I've been praying. Everyone that you hear, when I pray, there are prayers and prayers. When I pray, I tell you I pray. There are sometimes I fast here. You don't know I am fasting. Because then I'm looking for God's direction. It's none of your business. It's because of my intimacy with God. Amen. There are prayers you don't need to tell people you're doing. There are things you don't, you don't need to even open your mouth. It is between you and him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. then what, that's, that's where he's going to reveal himself. Not when you make yourself up like those Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Every day I'm praying and fasting. But what? Even you who have children. There are times my children don't know I am praying. They can even hear sometimes. They don't know. I lock myself in my room. I don't need to tell them I'm praying. Or when they are sleeping. It has to be my quiet time with God. Amen. Amen. So approach the Lord with the correct way, with reverence and fear. If you fear your boss, when you're speaking to your boss, you put your phone off. I don't see you in front of your boss with your phone ringing. I don't think so. But people don't even dare do that when they're approaching God. I'm just giving that little example. The fear of God starts with those little, little things. Do not that you have the fear of God. Those little, little things shape, show a, a lot. Amen? We need to approach God with that fear of God. Amen? Assuming that we don't know anything, but he knows everything. The third point, ask through the great high priest, Jesus Christ. We have the great high priest. We have a, a priest here who lied. No, he didn't really lie. He, uh, he omitted something. To send people to war. Yes, but the high priest Jesus will never fail us. Amen. We have his name, we have his blood. Amen. Approach God through Jesus Christ and according to the Father's will. That's the two things. It has to be according to the Father's will. Amen. And the fourth point, let the Lord use his own strategy. You have tried yours, it's not working. Let God use his. Amen. Please give him one minute so that he can try something too. Because some people are not even ready to give that little second for God to try. Amen? Because his strategy can defeat the enemy. He can defeat. Amen? And then when we do all those things, I am sure that God will give us that victory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? So I want us to stand up this morning. We're going to pray. There are plans, there are things that we started. Maybe we didn't seek for God's guidance. This is the time. This is the time to say, Lord, you see, they went many times. God said, go, go, go. Say, you guys say, Lord, I want to be in your perfect will now. I want your will. I want your guidance. I want your direction. Show me. Show me. Show me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. You know. You know the plans that you have. You know the things that you have started doing. You know where you want to go. But you need to know where God wants you to go. Hallelujah. Let us pray in Jesus' name. Father, 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 Rota Shedding, the baby, baby, Rita Toku, Baba, 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 Shai, Rito, Rota Shedding, the baby, 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 Rita, Tata, Rada, Rigo, Baba, Rico, Mashere, Kuda, Rabo, Shere, baby, Roba, Baba, 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 Shai, Rico, Baba, Rita, Shakara, Beto, Rudu, Rita, Baba, Kuma, Mashere, Kise, Kise, Dipo, Poko, Poko, Korna, Shai, Randa, Bake, baby, baby, La Tor, Mishere, Kama, Shai, Roba, Baba, Father, I give you all the plans, all the plans, all the plans, all the plans, Father God. All my projects, Father God. Oh, Father God, no matter what project I have started, I have initiated, Father God, when I have not consulted you first, I ask you in Jesus' name, today, 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 in Jesus' name.
name, I ask you, Lord, for your will. I ask you to reveal your will to me, to reveal, Father God, if, if there's any project that I have started, Father God, without you, today I renounce it, Father God, and I want your will, Father God. I want your will, Lord of grace. I want to know your will, Father God. No matter what project, no matter what plan, no matter what ambition, no matter what I am doing, Father God, where I have not sought you, Father God, first, Father God, today, I resume in the right position. I don't want to be determined, Father God. I, want, I don't want to go stubbornly. I don't want to walk according to my own knowledge. I want to see you, Father God, in my projects, in my plans, because I know, Father God, that what you give me is good for me. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus because I know that with you I can do everything. With you everything is possible. Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus. Take all our position in my plans. Oh Lord Jesus. I give you my plans. I give you my projects. I give you everything this morning. This morning. This morning. This morning. I give you all the projects. I give you Haiti projects. I give you all the trips, Father God, that were open to me this year and the years to come. I give you my house. I give you my children. I give you my work. I give you everything I am in right now. All the projects, Father God. I give you random publications. I give you the books, Father God, that I have already published. Father, maybe I didn't ask you to publish them. And then I just do, I just do it because I thought that they were good. Today I give you all the books, Father God. I give you all of them. I give you everything that I have. Can you open your mouth and pray? Pray, pray, pray. Pray, 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 It is important. Don't let the next six months look like the, the, the past. Every project you have, your studies, give your studies to the Lord. 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 Give your studies. The projects that the Lord you you want him to do. Give him your work, your projects, your plans, everything, everything you want him to do. Give it to him now, 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 now. Holy God, Because he can give you victory today. In the name of Jesus, he can give you the victory today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we don't want to walk according to our own plans. We want to walk according to your plan. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Your plans, Lord. Your plans, Lord. Your plans, Lord. Your will. May your will be done in our lives. Oh, he can have a machine. Oh, no, 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 Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I give you all my. 